Hello, hello, hello. Hi. How are you guys doing? Welcome to another session of Q&A with Dr. Mercy. I'm Dr. Mercy and I'm happy to be here. Happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday. Now, I wanted to do this live, but I had a lot of technical difficulties. And so I thought the best way to do it is to do it recording. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this as a recording and then upload it um, today, hopefully. And I will also reshow this during my normal broadcasting hours. But um, unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, I had to revert to a recording. So anyways, I hope you guys had a wonderful Friday. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, and I'm happy that you are here and enjoy and joined me today. Like always, I like to always know where you guys are viewing me from. So if you could write down in the comment section where you're viewing, that would be great. Love to know how far our community goes. All right. Well, this week and also for future uh, broadcasts, I would like to dive into something that is very near and dear in my heart. Um, from a practice standpoint, I want to be moving towards wellness and wellness medicine because I feel like prevention is always better than cure. And in, though I, although I work as a hospital doctor and I treat a lot of people who already have the disease, my life's mission is to help in preventing these disease so I don't have to see you in the hospital, but rather you can continue to enjoy life, enjoy it uh, with minimal ailment to yourself. So I decided that this week we can start this series that I call 10 food ingredients to avoid. You know, um, in the stores that we go to more times than not, what's in the aisle is processed foods. And ideally, it's probably best that we avoid as much processed foods as possible. God produced natural foods and wholesome foods. And that's what we really need to stick to. And if I was to have a plate and I show it to you, majority of what is, is on your plate should be natural, minimally processed foods. But I mean, we live in the society we live in now and our, based on our taste buds, although we can train our taste buds, but based on the current taste buds that we have, you know, a lot of the, the foods that we buy are processed. So if we're going to be eating a portion of processed foods, we might as well be very wise on what foods that we need to avoid based on the ingredients they have in them. So I, like I said, I decided to start this series, 10 ingredients uh, or 10 food ingredients to avoid. And today is gonna be the first food ingredient, and that is high fructose corn syrup. Now, I know you may be like, some of you may know what it is. Some of you, this is the first time, uh, you know, hearing about it, although it's probably not. It is an ingredient that is abundant in a lot of the processed foods that you see in the store, at least, I want to say 70 to 80% of the foods that you see in the store contains a form of high fructose corn syrup or contains an amount of high fructose corn syrup. So this talk is to talk about exactly why is high fructose corn syrup something that we should totally avoid if we don't avoid it, at least minimize in our diet. Let's dive in. Well, what is high fructose corn syrup and where do you see it a lot of times? Well, you see it in foods such as, you know, muffins, such as brownies, such as um, ice cream, such as cookies. Essentially, you see it a lot in desserts, but you see it in other common foods as well that we normally eat. So the goal is to know where high fructose syrup is in your diet 
and what to me in the food that you buy and if you can't avoid it how to minimally avoid that uh in your in in your daily consumption of food before we get into how to see if your food has high fructose corn syrup let's really dive into the science of sugar if you break sugar down to its simplest form it you will see this and you're like well what why did we talking about sugar well high fructose corn syrup is a sweetener it's essentially made up of these molecules that you see here and so it is in i would consider the sugar group or the sweetener group it is really corn syrup so it's it's sugar coming from corn that they manufactured not only to extract that sugar coming from corn but to break it down to its simplest molecules like what you see here now just to give you a rundown of sugar in general when you break it down there's first of all there's multiple different types of sugars um and the ones that you see here are the common ones so maltose which you can see in stuff like um uh, malt liquor is a form of sugar sucrose and lactose which you can see in milk now if you break it break those sugars types of sugars down you see the actual simple molecule and you see them in different colors you see glucose which you guys have heard of it's the most simplest molecule of sugar followed by fructose this is part of why we say high fructose corn syrup fructose is a simple molecule and then galactose which is part of the sugar molecule that you see in milk So if you bind two glucose molecules together it forms the maltose sugar that I was talking about. If you bind glucose and fructose together it forms sucrose and if you bind galactose and glucose together it forms lactose. So remember these are it's in its simplest forms. And I will we'll talk more about how high fructose corn syrup Well actually let me talk about it now and then we'll have a diagram. The reason why reason number 1 why it's very detrimental for your body to be exposed to high fructose corn syrup is this. Just hearing the name right now you know, you have an idea of what the corn syrup is comprised of. It's comprised of a lot high amounts of fructose. So essentially what they do in the what they did in the lab is they broke that corn syrup up into individual parts. Some of it being glucose and some of it being fructose. And these parts instead of them to be bound together and given to your body like naturally it is broken into their individual parts and then just and it's giving your body those just simple parts normally what happens when that happens is there's a couple of organs that are affected by this um the main two being the liver and the pancreas now normally when you have wholesome food that contains sugar in its whole component both the liver and the sugar help to break it down in a slow but steady fashion so that the liver doesn't feel overworked because it's just breaking it down at leisure the pancreas doesn't feel like it's doing any work cuz it's also breaking it down also at its normal rate. When you introduce high fructose corn syrup to the body, it's like you're injecting a uh, sugar into your veins. It's that extreme burst of those 
simple molecules into the body. And what that does in simple terms is it causes those two, particularly those two organs, but other organs as well, but particularly those two organs, it causes them to be overworked and they're running and they're running and they're racing and they're racing because they need to get that a large amounts of simple molecules in somewhere, whether it's to convert it to cholesterol, whether it's to convert it to fat, they need to get it out of the bloodstream as fast as possible. And you're overworking those two organs in particular, the liver and the pancreas. And when you overwork it, eventually they can't work anymore and they go into failure. And pretty much that's the definition of diabetes. For some people, type two, they were born with the amount of cells to produce insulin, but maybe due to their genetics, some may not have been born with enough of those cells to last a lifetime. And some maybe were born with enough cells to produce the insulin, but due to constant overworking of the pancreas, because it was highly exposed to things like high fructose corn syrup, the pancreas gives out and can no longer produce insulin by itself and it needs help that's when diabetes starts to happen. That's when you need medication, either insulin in its, in a, in, in, its, in its form, or you need pills that can help assist the pancreas to make insulin to bring down the sugars. Where do the sugars get, go? They get stored. They get stored in different forms. They get stored in like cholesterol. They get stored in fat, those type of things. So you, if, you, if you followed me in what I just told you right now, you can now understand why high fructose corn syrup is not a good thing. So as we go deeper into this, we see that there is the need to know, okay, if it's not a good thing, how do I know if it's in my food? Simple. Look at the back. Look at the nutrition facts. Look at the ingredients, okay? So a lot of times in the ingredients, the, it will just blatantly tell you. Um, or it will give, or if it doesn't say high fructose corn syrup, it will give you one of the alternative names. In this case, in this particular um uh, nutrition label, you see uh, corn syrup here um, as the first ingredient. I believe this was an actual syrup. Um, so obviously the first ingredient is going to be the corn syrup refined. And this is corn syrup and it says refiner syrup, caramel flavor, salt, sodium benzoate, and caramel color. Ooh, it just seems like a lot of processed items to me. So high fructose corn syrup can also be described with other names. So if you see this on the back, just know that this is likely high fructose corn syrup. <clears throat> if you see glucose, fructose syrup, isoglucose, maize syrup, fructose syrup, tapioca a syrup, fruit, fructose syrup, corn syrup, caramel syrup. Those are the names that will indicate that this is actually high fructose syrup. So be very vigilant. The more of the story is be very vigilant in watching what's at back. And getting back to that label, just a helpful hint. Makers of food tend to write the most common ingredient first, and then every, the one with the least amount 
uh, in dis- at least amount as last. So they tend to write in descending order. So typically, if you see the first maybe one, two, or three in- ingredients listed, those are usually the most um, the most common ingredient in that particular product. So this is a syrup, so not surprised, but the most common ingredient is listed there, which is corn syrup, okay? So that's how you know, that should tell you, okay, this is just really full of corn syrup. A lot of times you see the first ingredient being water or for some bakers, bakery goods, the first ingredient being wheat. But it's really, really, really important to start, if you haven't already, start looking at the back, start looking at those ingredients, start looking at the nutrition facts. And um, I, I plan on wanting to talk more in depth about nutrition facts, the nutrition fact um, chart there, just to make sure everybody is all well acquainted what the nutrition facts really, information they really give you. But I divert. So, like I said, these are the list of ingredients that you can commonly see in products that pretty much are just saying high fructose corn syrup. So, if you see any of this in the back of a product, just say, okay, that's pretty much high fructose corn syrup. So, now we want to talk about what high fructose corn syrup does to the body. We, I, I explained it earlier, but we want to go a deep dive. So like I told you, the main two um, organs that are affected is the liver and the pancreas. Although I don't have the pancreas here, uh, it is one of those organs that are affected by, excuse me, that are affected by um, having a lot of fructose or even glucose in this body system. So in particular, when you have too much fructose, as you can see in the middle of this, um, diagram is a chemical structure of fructose. It's how fructose looks in, I guess, a microscope or, or yeah, a microscope. If a very, very highly, highly sensitive microscope, if you have too much of fructose in your body, remember I said that the body converts these simple glucose molecules or simple sugar molecules into something else to store it. So it could be fat, it could be cholesterol. It just, it has to be stored. So when you have too much fat, what does that do? That fat has to be stored somewhere. So a lot of times it's stored where? Either in fat tissues that you see around your belly and and fructose has been linked to causes of abdominal fat. So if you have some abdominal fat, okay, check whether or not it's because you're eating too much simple sugars, particularly fructose. Um, But not only is it stored in your fat tissues, it's also stored in the liver. And if you look at the upper left-hand side of this image, you'll see a liver that looks kind of goldish brown. That is their way of showing a fatty liver. And when you have a fatty liver, it is termed in our, in our uh, medical community, um, fatty liver, or another term, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It is another topic that if you guys want me to talk about, um, I can also talk about later on in the future. But essentially, it is a condition where due to having a fatty liver, eventually your liver gives out and you go into liver failure and, um, and it's almost takes you into a, a, a condition that's very similar to those who drink too much alcohol and pretty much lose their liver as a result of it. So 
this is not talked about a lot, but too much of too much of glucose, too much of uh, you know, a fructose can lead to this condition called fatty liver disease or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Like I told you, um, the bottom uh, left-hand side, there's a reddish brownish looking liver and it, they wrote type two diabetes. Really, they should have showed the pancreas, but I digress because the diabetes really is mainly uh, a disease condition of the pancreas. But notwithstanding, too much, like I said earlier, too much of glucose, too much of fructose can cause your pancreas to want, give out. And that can lead to a condition called diabetes or type two diabetes. And then you see the lady who has a, looks like she's pregnant, but it looks like she has a lot of fat around her stomach. And like I said, high fructose corn syrup can lead to abdominal fat or just fat overall in your body. Lastly, like I said, um, and you, I don't know if you heard, but when you have too much fructose, it has to be, con con it has to be converted to fat. But it also can be converted to cholesterol, which technically is within the fat family. That cholesterol has to be stored somewhere. And a lot of times it gets deposited into your arteries. And too much cholesterol in your arteries causes what? It can cause a stroke in your brain. Or if there's too much cholesterol in your arteries of your heart, it can cause a heart attack. Or if there's too much cholesterol in your legs, in the arteries of your legs, it can cause a term called peripheral vascular disease or peripheral arterial disease. So if you look at the upper right-hand side, you see this, it looks like a pipe, red pipe looking thing that's supposed to represent your arteries. And then inside there, you see these, it looks like um, mounds of yellow, uh, deposits inside the, that red pipe, that's cholesterol. Eventually, when you have cholesterol in that pipe looking thing, AKA your arteries, blood is not able to flow properly through the arteries. And that's how damage occurs. And if that's in the heart, it's a heart attack. If that's in a brain, it's a stroke. And like I said, if that's in the legs, it causes leg disease. If that's anywhere in your body, it causes damage to that organ. So this is why it's important to not have too much cholesterol in your body. And then lastly, too much high fructose corn syrup has been associated with high blood pressure. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and that's, that that's uh, due to multiple things. So the moral of the story, if you can avoid it, avoid it. If you can limit it, that's probably better to do. And so let me go back, I think. So now somebody may say, well, isn't high fructose, I mean, excuse me, isn't fructose also seen in natural products? Yes, it is. Isn't it seen in things like apples and fruits? Yeah, it is. So are you saying that we shouldn't eat fruits? No, no, not at all. Even though fructose is seen in natural foods like fruit, like fruits, okay, it's seen in a form that can be easily digested in the system. When you're eating an, a, a fruit, like an apple, for example, you have other things that are in it. It's not concentrated fructose that's like pouring into your system. No, when you eat the fructose in an apple, you also have fiber there, you have vitamin there, you have minerals there. And so when the body, when you ingest that apple, the body is taking its time to break down all these things, including the fructose. So there is a slow but steady form of 
fructose entering into those organs like the liver and the pancreas. And they don't see, and those two organs don't seem like they're being overworked by the amount of fructose that's in these um, fruits. And also because they're coming in, not in its simplest form, but they're coming in with other things that need to be digested as well. And so it is a slow and steady rate instead of something pumped into you or ejected into you. Um, okay, so, and, and, and pardon the, the, uh, the graphics, but it says high fructose corn syrup. So pretty much what are the alternatives? What can you use in place of high fructose corn syrup? So here are some examples, raw honey, instead of buying, okay, instead of, you know, putting high fructose corn syrup, you know, into any, any recipe, try honey. Um, then you can have things like stevia. Although for me, just on a personal basis, I really am trying to stay away from artificial sweeteners um, because you know, I, I'm not totally convinced that they're hundred percent, um, healthy for you, but we, you know, it is a potential alternative. Um, dates have some sugar in it and just like other fruits, it comes with other things, fibers, minerals, vitamins. Um, it's not in a concentrated form. Coconut sugar, um, you maple sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup, um, or instead of the conventional syrup for your pancakes, try maple syrup. And then you have the molasses, which can be used as an alternative as well. So in conclusion, I hope you got from this talk that high fructose, high fructose corn syrup is not a good thing in excess. And if it can be avoided, please avoid it. But um, overall, unfortunately, high fructose corn syrup is in a lot of processed foods. So it should make you think, okay, how much processed foods am I consuming? And how much of this contains this ingredient? I'm not saying you should have to stop completely. But I, what I am saying is maybe limit that amount of processed food and increase the amount of natural, wholesome food. Well, that ends this uh, session of Q&A with Dr. Mercy. Thank you so much for um, joining me. Again, if you have any questions on this topic or if you have any questions on other topics or anything that you think that we should discuss, please make sure to write that down in the comment section. Even though this is not live, I will review it. Okay, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your night or day and also have a wonderful week. And until next time, bye.